Hi guys, welcome back to James Talk Stuff. Today we're going to be going back to a channel we visited previously called Cinema Therapy. And I this is because I recently watched the film Puss in Boots The Last Wish again. Um, as there's going to be spoilers throughout this video and also spoilers throughout the video that we're going to be reacting to for the film. So this is your chance to go and watch it and then come back. One of the reasons I really enjoy the film and the reason it's rated so highly on like Rotten Tomatoes and things like that is because one of the main characters is Death, which is the wolf protagonist. I'm going to be watching this video and give my thoughts about when they do discuss when they do discuss Puss in Boots' reaction to the fact he's only got one life left and anything surrounding the Death character. I think they're going to be talking about anxiety and things like that as well, which if you want to know about, please go and watch the original video. But we're going to get into it right away. Um, as I say, I watched it with my very own team friendship very recently, so I'm very much looking forward to this. What's the matter? Lives flashing before your eyes? No. We need to have a healthy fear of death, and we need to have a healthy fear of our own mortality, because I think that's what keeps no. us focused on okay, what I want to do with the time I have. Either run and run and run, or you can sit there and like look it in the face. Yeah. How do you cope with fear? Try not to be afraid. Fear me if you dare. Making peace with your mortality and saying, okay, instead of being scared of that, how should I just be living my life so that when death comes for me, I'm like, I'm good because I, I like the life that I lived and I liked who I was and I like what I did. Feelings just are. They just exist. We choose what to do with them, but their very presence is not shameful or bad. They, they just are and they're part of the human experience and there's no good column or bad column. There's just, okay, this is what I'm feeling now, what do I do with it? And as long as we stigmatize certain emotions, we don't allow ourselves to feel them and we we emotionally stunt ourselves and limit ourselves. Well, that was a lot to pack in the first couple of moments of this video. Um, essentially, they summed up what the film is about. It's about the idea of appreciating the life you've got by accepting death, by accepting the fact that you are going to die at some point and not to be scared of it, essentially. So I'm glad that they're focusing on that because that's exactly what interested me about the film and what will be interested about me discussing today. But again, oh, that's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in death as a concept, in the idea that we are going to die and therefore how should we approach life as mortal beings. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how the rest of the video plays out. Welcome to Cinema Therapy. My name's Alan Seawright. I'm a professional filmmaker who needs therapy. Over there, Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist who loves movies. Today, we're joined by Emma McAdam from Therapy in a Nutshell. Another therapist. And that's good because therapists. Mag. Plural are going to react today to boots in boots. <laughs> At Therapy in a Nutshell, if you haven't watched it, Emma does what we do without all the bullcrap. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> if you want the straight psychology delivered with a lot of personality and empathy and is really easy to digest, highly recommend her channel. I've learned things from her that Jono just won't teach me because he's too busy making bad dad jokes. <laughs> that is the gist of it. What are we going to be talking about in Puss and Boost today? What uh, are you thinking? How much I hope that this isn't the last, last wish. Oh. Never have I seen a movie and been like, yeah, I want a sequel to that more than this. As far as therapeutic concepts, um... I mean, probably anxiety. Yeah, see. Fear of mortality, is that a, a thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Fear of death and some panic attacks, some emotional suppression. All right, yeah. bring it on. There's Let's a lot to this. talk about. Yeah, this is the scene where he's basically burying his former life. So he's almost accepting he's died before he actually <laughs> dies. To pussy much. There are no words to express such a loss. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, as much as it's played for last, it's actually quite morbid, that scene. Um, he's doing his own eulogy, which is strange. I've only ever seen it done in uh, Anchorman as well. But he, yeah, he's basically accepted that the life that he lived has ended and he's moving on to the next part of his life, which he approaches as this massive misery in that he's lost who he identified as a person. 
in this great, you know, fearless hero. So now he needs to move on to the next part of his life. And towards the end of the film, he sees that as an advantage and takes it in his steed. And that's what a death then goes, ah, oh, you know, I was here for a arrogant hero who was laughed in the face of death, but you're no longer that person. So it changes who he was, but he's happy with that change. Whereas the first part of this film, he's miserable. So, yeah. Hold it just too long. And there he goes. <laughs> he was known across the land by many names. Stabby Tabby, okay. El Macho Gato. Delicious. Is it a useful therapeutic principle to like eulogize the passing of yourself into a different like who you used to be? Yeah. Or is this just silly? Like acceptance and commitment therapy all the time they ask people to be like, what would you want your life to be about if you were looking back on it? <laughs> <laughs> and here he is again. Comes up from the Pops bottom. Up from the bottom. <laughs> Oh, okay, sorry, what were you saying? Sorry. No, that's all right. The cat's more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, to be fair, he's more interesting than all of us. Yes, this is true. <laughs> but look at all the flowers. Like, this didn't need to be such a beautiful film. Oh, but was that his was mascara poorly... running? Yes, his mascara was his <laughs> eyeliner. <laughs> okay, so wait, what were you saying then? Oh, like acceptance and commitment therapy will ask people a lot of times. Like, okay, if you were to look at your life... And to help them clarify their values, they'll be like, okay, write your eulogy. What would you want people to say about you and your life after you've died? Wow. Um, yeah, that's quite a good exercise. I might have to try and do that. Write about what you would like people to think about you after you've died. Like, write your own eulogy. God, that's going to take a lot of reflection. Um yeah, I think because I, one of the concepts that I was thinking of doing for a video doing was writing obituaries for famous people before they've actually died. Because I always find it a bit sad that, you know, that we seem to never show appreciation for someone who is who is died at the time that they're alive. We wait until they've died. Like David Bowie got more popular, I would argue, when he well, after he died. Um, and same with like Prince and things like that. I didn't realise how much people appreciated them until their tributes came in after they had died. So I've always wanted to do something like that, and that's something that I would be looking to do in the future. Never thought about writing my own eulogy, though. I say it's quite a morbid exercise, but I'm all about morbid exercises, so it's something I'm definitely going to give a go at some point. But, yeah, good idea so far. You know what I see in this is... What we're Just skip fast about the about Pareto and how he's when so happy, with, you know, with his life, Muerte, regardless of yeah. all the trauma he's he been through. It's right? very interesting. Like, Please watch it. On Muerte isn't the, the approach for the roses, and I think that's the lesson for Puss: is not to abandon all of what has made you successful, but you can't just copy and paste and do the same thing over and over. Yeah, it's like emotional flexibility, right? Big sign yeah. of mental health is like the ability to both be like courageous and intense and get a bunch of stuff done and also have the flexibility to be able to tone it down, like chill, relax, right? Really helping yeah. people can do both or have multiple skills or more flexible mentally and emotionally instead of just having one skill and I'm never going to fear, I'm never going to have feelings, I'm never going to like feel sad and if I do, I'll run away from it. Yeah, and that's, I think, I love that you say emotionally healthy people are able to like find that balance yeah. because most of us stay in the lane we're comfortable in. Yeah. I got him, Mr. Order! My bad! <laughs> people die in this movie. So many people. <laughs> oh, this is where he gets really just all of, like, terrified. That's his panic attack. Yeah. They're probably going to talk about that. I still can't hear the whistling without getting so goosebumps. Sense, huh? That intuition. Oh my gosh. Again, the direction in this film, the way they establish. Like, this is the legitimately the most scared I've ever been of an animated character. So, one of the things that really interested me about death in this film is... Originally, I thought it was more like he was almost like playing with his food. Because at any point, he could have... You've seen the skill he's got. At any point, he could have killed Puss. At any point, he could have jumped in, taken him and carried on with his life. But I think it's not to do with the sense of power. Or maybe it is. It's the idea that he knows that regardless of what happens in this confrontation that him and Puss have several times throughout you know, the film, 
he's going to win. As he says, many men have tried to defeat me and no one has succeeded. He's death. People will succumb to him at some point. So he's not in a rush. You know, he wants to prove a point. He wants to get a lesson to Puss to make him appreciate his life. But he's not in a rush. And that, like that scene there, he could have just gone straight in while the chaos was happening, finished him off. Instead, he's just reminding him with that whistle that death's coming. So it's like having that reminder of death is terrifying, but also, as I've always found, it's quite it's quite freeing. You know that death is something that's part of life and to just ignore it is well it's better the devil you know isn't it that's why I, my that's always what my approach has been so that's why i think he doesn't like attack him too much throughout these parts and it's only right at the end where he's just got you know gone through this journey that he then appears and i think it's very key that he appears at those certain parts like that reflection chamber as well the animation is so beautiful like the soft almost impressionistic like i just yeah. love it it's just beautiful really really well done what 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 how about that panic attack huh what what's wrong this was the part that made me tear up in the cinema when i watched it I was just like, oh, I want a dog. <laughs> I think Perito does what he is meant to be, a therapy dog. Oh, such a good therapy dog. Yeah, and I think um, that scene's always great, and it's, it just highlights the importance of the panic is and fear is about uh, being scared of something that's not yet happened, and being in the moment with something that's you know making you happy. It's giving you that emotion that you're happy that this is happening with burrito and the, the nice feelings you get from from having a dog near you and just stroking a dog it takes you back into the moment that you're in and then helps you with the panic. So, yeah. But my main takeaway is that is I want a dog, so. So they're gonna talk a bit about panic attacks. I'm going to skip through this part because it's gonna be very interesting, but I don't think it's gonna to talk too much about death. So if you're interested in that, please go watch the original video. <laughs> that's, that's it. So we, we have to work through these things in our relationships. He's very conflicting for me. <laughs> He's meeting all of his past selves. Without us, you will always live a life of fear. <laughs> I do love the smell of fear. I will have to skip through it a lot just so I don't, you know, get copyrighted and the video gets taken down. You crash the party with your past lives or your past deaths, as I like to call them. <laughs> I was there to witness all of them. All of them. All of them. It didn't even notice me because Boots and Boots laughs in the face of death, right? You are nobody hunter. You are death. I think the thing that makes this the most scary is obviously he's facing the personification of his own mortality. Yeah. I'm death. Straight up. Why psychologically is that terrifying? Oh, come I on. Think like Here we go. Boots, we are all aware that we're going to die one day, but we don't like to dwell on it and it doesn't feel real. Yeah. And so we kind of live our lives as if we're not going to. Yeah. I laugh at death. <laughs> you see? And we live our lives wrapped up in the stupid daily crap and the petty things that we get hung up on or the pursuits that are kind of meaningless. Because if we actually make peace with I'm going to die, mm -hmm. then we would spend our time better. Yeah. Who wants to do that? Exactly. It's hard. <laughs> it it's is. hard to do things good. <laughs> no. I went to a training the other day where... Yeah, see, that it echoes a lot of sentiment I've already expressed on this channel. And as much as, you know, I don't want to keep repeating myself, I do think that is why it's so important to talk about death, because it, coming to peace with it 
means you do make a more informed decision. You know, you, you get to the end of your life and you think, oh God, I just wish I'd done this and the other. Or well, if you contemplate and put yourself in the position that you're at the end of your life, a bit like what they were saying about discussing the, or practicing your own eulogy, you're putting yourself in that part. You're gonna look back and go, oh, I wish I'd done this, that and the other. Well, guess what? You haven't done it yet. You can go and do it right now. So I think that's why it's so important. Um, and I just think that the Puss in Boots, The Last Wish does it so well in bringing to bring it to the forefront of why it's so interesting. And also just the fact that the film's also very funny and it's very entertaining. It kind of puts it in a lighthearted way. They also talk a lot about adoption and things like that. So I feel that's always discussed really well throughout the film. But the way it does approach death is the interesting part where a therapist was talking about how she works with people who have panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she does, they're afraid of dying, right? These physical sensations feel like they're dying. Sure. And she says, and then what? Like, why is that so scary? And she makes them like go into extreme detail about why death is so scary to them. And as soon as they do, and they actually honestly admit it instead of just running from it, yeah. they're like, oh, just like you said, I should live my life differently if my life yeah, see, my fear, because as much as I discuss death, I'm obviously scared of it as much as a lot of us would be, um, is just the, inter I call it like, think of it as the eternal silence, is the idea that I'm not going to think and feel anything ever again. I know I might not be aware of it, but it's just the, the fear that there's no experience that I'm going to have and I'm never going to have a thought again. That, you know, really freaks me out. Um, but again, it's me not thinking about it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. So I want to be able to come to terms with it. And I think it's going to take a while. So therefore, I'll just try and do that as best as I can, as early as I can in my life to, as even just it says here on the screen, I should live my life differently if my life is short. Um, again, short is a matter of perspective, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, what, that's basically... Uh, I think it's, again, you need to be in a safe space to be able to discuss it. That's why a lot of the videos that I'm going to do are very, I, you know, I always say you have to be in the right headspace to be able to to watch and to consider some of the ideas that we're going to discuss. But I, just because I think it's so important, that's why I wanted to make this channel dedicated to it. Um, but if you want a bit more lighthearted approach that still discusses it, watch Pussy Boots and Last Wish. It's very good. short yeah which is kind of what the film is building to yeah. is making peace with your mortality and saying okay instead of being scared of that how should I just be living my life so that when death comes for me I'm like I'm good because I I like the life that I lived and I liked who I was and I liked what I did he then greeted death as an old friend I was about to say it he sounds so much like the deathly hollows departing this life as oh I need to do a video on that that's I think that's one of the reasons we're we're scared of death is not doing the things that we wanted to do or becoming who we wanted to become, right? I mean, I think it's it's natural to be scared of like how you die. I mean, if you die, yeah, <laughs> like pain, being scared of pain, right? Yeah. But like, I think you want to live so that death itself is kind of like okay, like I did good, I experienced one. See, I've never really had those kind of like, expectations of. A lot of I want to be something specific. So I don't feel of missing that. And here we go. Here we go, oh, it's just... Fine. Oof! The animation is so cool! Again, I'm gonna have to likely skip this part, just because I don't want to get copyright striked again. The first time I saw... Obviously, I'll be silly not to mention the weapon that he's using. Um, my friend who was watching this with mentioned it's a bit like, you know, some sort of reaver, or um, I thought it's similar to the scimitar, obviously, that the Grim Reaper is often depicted with, that a lot of people associate with death. But... He mentioned that, it, especially in like Egyptian culture and any ancient culture, it's used for crops and reaping. That hence why the Grim Reaper, you know, it's about reaping crops with the with that um, more curved version. Uh, I, guess I can't remember the name of it now, but obviously, if you knew anything about death, watching this film, it was quite obvious this person was supposed to represent death, even if just metaphorically and obviously he's not metaphorically as he says through the film he's actually just Puss's personification of death hence why he's going after Puss because everyone in the film dies apparently well I mean 
a load of people in the film actually die. A load of the Baker's dozen all gone. You know, I'm pretty sure Big Jack Horner, you know, also dies. So why is Death not focusing on them? Well, I think it's more the personification for Puss to understand the fear of, of death that he has. I know I can never defeat you. No, that's a good bit. Yeah. Never stop fighting for this life. It's where he clicks. No, no, I can't defeat you, but I won't stop fighting for this life. Basically, he's had that on a shirt. And he's showing not a twinge of fear anymore. <laughs> You're ruining this for me. I came here for an arrogant little legend who thought he was immortal. But I don't see him anymore. Live your life, Lucy Moves. Live it well. No, I like this last night. You know we will meet again, right? Si, hasta la muerte. I love that little bit of performance when uh, Death says, I don't see him anymore, and we cut to Puss, and he lets out a breath. Yeah. Like he was nervous. He's been holding, like, this whole time he presented this brave face, and then we get to see, oh, he was still afraid. Yeah. And yeah. That's part of why Death is letting him go. That came from the one who's not a therapist. That's so true. I didn't even consider that. The fact that when Death's like, you know, I'll give you a pass, mate. And the idea that he lets out that breath to show that he is still scared of death. He's still afraid because he's afraid because he doesn't want to lose the life that he's got any earlier than he needs to. And Death's trying to take that from him. So it's showing that the fear is still there, but it's an acceptance of the fear. It's the acceptance of the feelings that you've got, which they allude to a lot earlier in the video. But yeah, it's, I can't help but say that I, I do love this film. I remember, I will be completely honest, I went and saw it myself because some people thought, oh, I've not seen Puss in Boots too. Why would I do that? You know, it's a kid's film. I've seen Puss in Boots 1 wasn't that good. Why would I see Puss in Boots 2? And just because I'm a big fan of review channels on YouTube, and a lot of them were harping it, saying, oh, this is brilliant, it's fantastic, that's amazing. I was like, okay, I'll go. Oh, you know what? I'm curious, because I also knew roughly about the character of Death in it. I thought, I'm definitely going to see it. I'm so happy I did. With that being said, what do you think? Have you seen the film? Have, did you enjoy it? Let's begin. Why did you enjoy it would be more of an accurate one because there is so much on the film to enjoy, not just what I'm interested in about the death and the moral about death throughout the film, but the animation, the comedy, just every, every part of the character work that was done from the beginning of the film to the end of the film. If you've not seen it, what are you doing? Go go watch it, it's, it's brilliant. It's Enter the Spider-Verse animation with even better, I would argue, level of storytelling, maybe on par, um, honestly. I couldn't get enough of it. I'm going to probably watch it again after filming this video, just because I want to see it again on my own terms and be able to flick through parts of it. Because you, you can see when you flick back earlier in the film, the death is actually in the background of when he dies fighting the giant beginning. But it's so good. And I could write an, a video essay on it, and I think I might do that at some point. But this was just to get a reaction to a therapist's view on it so that I can learn a bit better about it myself. So. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you want to see other videos that discuss death. But thanks for watching. Take care.